and I just want to to talk um, very briefly. There are just five slides, so don't worry um, about the issue of of corporate leadership and and what we uh, call the need for a, a new digital deal. And if you go to the first slide, Liria, um, I think that actually, um, um, and that summarizes a little bit what we discussed, I suppose, over the last uh, the last two days, um, that we are facing in a very exceptional moment. Um, we have seen that, uh, or we thought that the whole digital revolution was already disrupting our lives. Uh, and with our lives, I mean our personal lives, but also, uh, of course, a lot of um, businesses. Um, and that basically the, the speed would be uh, really fast. Um, but then hit COVID and, and we realized that things can become even faster. So um, we, we've seen a digitalization happening um, in very few weeks um, that might have happened over uh, normally the time of years maybe. So um, we thought that we are already facing a big wave, um, but suddenly there was the real tsunami coming. Um, so we we see the outcome of that, um, and I just put a couple of data down there. We we mentioned other uh, uh, indicators of uh, of mistrust or of uh, lack of confidence. Uh, yesterday, the increase in cyber attacks. Um, we see um, we see, um, for example, here in Spain, and that came out yesterday, Nathan, in what you mentioned that uh, Spain was very low in the trust of the citizens to the government, even below the United States. But you see that um, there's little or no confidence by every second Spanish um, into the government's management of the COVID crisis. And then a couple of um, nearly uh, more fun data. Um, uh, there are only 20% of your citizens uh, who trust social networks. Um, I think according to what we said yesterday, that's maybe not a, a bad thing. Um, but then there are 25% of Europeans that uh, trust artificial intelligence more than their politicians. Um, so basically, that's, that's the Chinese dream of that we will be run by some form of uh, authoritarian artificial intelligence one day and that will be super efficient. Um, I don't know, but I mean, these are, these are uh, take it with a pinch of salt. Um, I think the key, um, the key message for us this year, we are really in an uh, exceptional moment that is, um, is, is kind of summarized by, by a huge uh, you know, fear of, um, of change, but also of uncertainty and mistrust. Um, if you go to the next slide, Nuria, please. In the end, um, if you look at that, um, and I think we can, we can summarize that, of course, it started all with a health crisis, a global emergency in itself, it would have been a, a huge impact. Um, but then it kind of, uh, due to the measures that need to be taken, um, it kind of developed, it developed into an economic crisis. Um, we've seen a drop of GDP on a global scale. Um, we've seen you know, a bigger drop um, in, in the Eurozone and Latin America, for example. Um, so we can we can say that this is a huge um, um, hit, um, maybe unprecedented hit, at least in the in recent history, um, when it, regarding you know how fast unemployment has gone up, how fast uh, basically the economy has come to to a standstill in many regards. Um, we've seen um, millions of people coming into into um, into extreme poverty, especially um, in developing countries. Um, this is a number from Latin America, uh, only the 40 to 60 million. Um, so um, there is there are things going out there that are really um, important, I would say. And I think that everything we see from the government side happening now is trying to avoid this, this social crisis becoming even bigger. Um, I think the economic crisis cannot um, can be can become milder, but um, I think it's really about trying to avoid, at least in Europe, um, a social crisis coming out of that with all the public health and, and programs uh, started. So what, um, what people say, and I think rightly so, is that um, actually uh, what we've said before, that we need some form of new kind of social contract, that we need um, a kind of new idea and vision for digitalized societies, um, uh, and that we really need to kind of come up with um, a shared vision. Um, this is even more urgent now. I think things have speeded up even more. Go to the next slide, Maria. So basically, um, I mean, what we've done uh, at Telefonica, just as an example, um, 
is that we started already um, a couple of years ago to to become worried with um, some development around digitalization. Um, we we said already in 2014 um, that we fear that this kind of utopia we mentioned also yesterday of you know internet kind of uh, kind of creating this utopian uh, better world um, that that somehow you know we are taking a wrong turn there and there are things were kind of going actually in the wrong direction and that things got more concentrated less open um, um, and less transparent for people um, so that we we got worried about these kind of consequences quite early starting from a new more kind of consumer um, uh, sorry customer perspective um, basically uh, worrying that um, there would be this tendency, and, and then we we updated that. Um, I would say with uh, with a view on artificial intelligence and, and data usage and so on uh, around two years ago, and um, we focused really more on what we would call maybe a human centric approach. Um, so you know, giving um, people um, more kind of control of uh, over data um, and and other uh, aspects. But then, you know, the the COVID thing hit and, and we realized already in March that maybe we need to come up with, with a kind of update of this whole idea. Um, that basically um, there's really a, a societal dimension here now and that we need to kind of use the chance um, of, yeah, of, of, a, of disruption to kind of um, think about how we can, how we can become better in in what we're doing as societies and uh, economies, and and we feel ourselves very much into that um, uh, in that game, and also we see that um, we as a company, um, and I think many others do the same, um, feel that these impacts are, are so deep that we need to come up with a different kind of um, attitude. That it's not enough to. Um, just uh, think about uh, what used to be the shareholder and used to be the economic success of companies. I mean, that's still there, of course, but we need to become uh, real players um, regarding these kind of more and broader societal issues. So what you might from today's view call, our, this is our journey, summarized in one slide from what we might call shareholder to stakeholder capitalism, if you want to speak in, in uh, world economic and uh, Davos terms. Um, so that we see ourselves very much more like a, uh, like a factor um, uh, that needs to come up with responses um, for societal aspirations um, and that we, that we should kind of be, be part of that. So we advocate very much for that. Next slide, Nuria. I mean, just to give you a little bit of an idea what that looks like, and I mean, this is a document that's that's uh, that's 80 pages long, so um, I don't want to bore you with, with details. But um, we kind of look at these three dimensions: uh, the societal dimension, the environmental, and the economic one. So, um, of course, you know, people are concerned um, with more than anything else with the economic situation currently. Um, but I think we also should not forget um, the broader environmental climate change uh, issue which is kind of looming in the background um, and of course um, the, the societal dimension is important because um, otherwise we cannot assure that that we leave um, no one behind really in this uh, digital transformation so if you go to the to the next slide um, and i finalize with that one um, um, I think that um, in the end, what we learned is that it's not good enough anymore to kind of stick to our home turf, so to speak. So we have to come out of our, our comfort zone. Um, we see that um, the, the broader developments are, are so worrisome on the policy, policy side, uh, on the confidence side of society in general, that basically um, we, we should become more involved in that. Um, you see here more or less the five pillars we talk about in this in this digital deal, as we call it. Um, it's very much based on on what we call you know values, um, and we know that this is a difficult word, um, but we we feel that um, there should be some form of guidance by values. Um, and I just uh, remind you that through the pandemic, I think we've seen that issues like solidarity, a value like solidarity, has become. Um, very important, and we've seen a lot of companies acting actually um, what you might call philanthropic, but I think it was going much further than that, um, and, and trying to help um, you know society and communities in, in, in these difficult times. So basically, um, 
we we are trying to do the same in various aspects um, uh, of more digital issues. You see down there that we argue for an ethical and responsible use of technology. Um, so basically, um, we we say, for example, um, that AI, uh, apart from uh, usage, uh, which need to be ethical, and where we, of course, like many others, have kind of set up principles and know that this is not just another technology we can use, but it's actually a um, um, a technology that impacts a lot, you know, human rights and, and people. So basically, we see that um, that this needs to be guided through a more uh, responsible use. At the same time, we also say that it's true that um, regulation will need to come in here. Um, we believe that this cannot be done just by the private sector, and that at least high-risk uh, usages of AI, uh, like uh, like facial recognition or, or autonomous driving and, and so on, cars will need to be guided by some form of certification and regulation, um, because otherwise there will basically no trust in the in society to accept these kind of usages. So that's an example. Another example is education, and we put a big focus on that. And uh, we feel that this lifelong learning environment we are in uh, already, um, where basically, you know, uh, we know that many of the children today in school will work in jobs we don't even, uh, that don't even exist. And many of us here, maybe even the ones on the call, uh, will do something totally different in 10 years' time. Um, and we need to be prepared for this kind of uh, new idea that we have to kind of develop ourselves and learn during our lives and not stop with maybe 25 years or 30 years uh, and then just, you know, have a safe um, uh, job and, uh, and a kind of clear path in our lives. I think that all of that um, is totally not um, uh, included in educational system today. Um, and, and we feel that that's, for example, where we can try to at least come up with a couple of initiatives and a couple of ideas um, and work together with uh, governments and, and, and other institutions to uh, develop um, ideas to go further down that route and push really uh, society into that direction. Because um, I think one of the things we have also learned during the pandemic is that maybe one of the most uh, resilient systems to any change is the school system. Um, and we've seen how difficult it has become for schooling and also for, uh, for universities, for secondary education to kind of basically cope with a totally new situation. Um, so this is just, I, can, I think, symptoms of this broader issue of tackling inequalities and trying to really be, be open that there will be um, um, a big need for change in our behaviors, uh, it will not be easy, but in the end, I think we can really create uh, better economies and better uh, societies.